Electricity Test Review Part 1. In this video, I'm going over the notes about current, voltage, resistance, power, electric circuits, and electric meters. Then I will solve some multiple choice practice problems. In the notes, I'm going to explain each one following the same format. I will start with the definition, then use an example and a diagram to explain the formula and units and the symbol we use to represent each one. So let me start with current. The abbreviation for current is uppercase I, and the definition is the flow of electrons in one direction. So in this diagram, we have a, an example of electrons that can move freely through this wire. So here we have an observer um, counting how many electrons pass in one section in one second. So that explains the definition of current. So current is measured by counting the number of electrons or charges that pass in a given section in one second. So the formula for current is the amount of charge or electrons for amount of time, in this case, one second. So using the abbreviations, current is I, charge is Q, and time is T. So the unit for current is the unit for charge is Coulomb, the unit of time is second. So the unit for current is Coulomb per second. The standard unit for current is A or amp. And the word amp comes from ampere. Okay, the symbol for current is an arrow. So this arrow can go either to the right, to the left, up or down, or even a curvy arrow. Now let's go to voltage. So the definition for voltage is a push that causes electrons to flow. So for the electrons from this wire to move, they need a push. So this push is given by the voltage. So there are basically two types of uh, voltage source. One that pushes the, electron, the electrons in one direction, so we call direct current, or DC. One example is a battery. So batteries are polarized. They have a positive and negative terminal. Also, we have a type of push that electrons can flow on both directions both directions and do periodically. Sometimes go in one direction and sometimes go to the opposite direction. So that's why the alternate current symbol is a wave form and represented by AC. DC, AC is related to how the current flow, the direction of the current. So by definition, voltage is the amount of, of energy given by if each charge in order to move. So in terms of abbreviation, voltage is V, energy is E, charge is Q. So we are looking for the units. So the unit for energy is joules, the energy for charge is Coulomb. So the unit for voltage is joules over coulomb, or joules per coulomb. The standard unit for voltage is uppercase V. That is the short for volt, 
which comes from the last name Voltaire. So the symbol for voltage, in this case for DC voltage, is two parallel lines. However, one line is longer than the other one. And the reason is to indicate there is a difference in charges between both terminals of a battery. So the longer one, we have less electrons. So in this case, it's positively charged. And the smaller lines, so it's negatively charged. So that's why a voltage is also named as potential difference. There is a difference between charges. We can also combine cells or batteries. So this is a single cell or a battery, and we can combine in series, which means that we have here one single cell and we have another single cell. The total voltage in this case will be three volts. Resistance. Resistance, like the name suggests, is opposes the flow of charges or the flow of electrons, or even better, it opposes the flow of current. Resistance is represented by the uppercase R. And to explain the formula, the conceptual formula of resistance, let's take a look on this electric, electrical wire. Um, and let's determine that the length of this wire is L. And this wire has cross-sectional area A, which is circular. Resistance depends on the length of a wire, the cross-sectional of the area of this wire, and the type of the material. Could be copper, could be aluminum, could be gold. So resistance is given by the type of material that we are going to determine as resistivity times of the length of the wire divided by the cross-sectional area. So here is the formula. R, resistance, is equal to resistivity is represented by the Greek letter rho times the length of the wire divided by the cross-sectional area. So the unit for resistance is ohms. And the unit for resistivity is ohms times meter. The symbol for resistance is kind of zigzag line. Power is represented by the uppercase P and is the rate at which the electrical energy is used per second and converted to other sources of energy. Let's look at this example. We have here a battery, a switch, and a light bulb, all connected with this wire. So as the battery provides the push or the energy per charge, the current flow through the lamp filament, in this case, if it is a condescent type of light bulb, uh, so the energy when passed through this filament is converted into light and heat. So the formula for power is energy over time. So the unit for energy is joules. The energy for time is second. So the unit for power is joules per second, which is equal to watts or uppercase W. Now let's notice there are two variables in these notes, in this note, that um, relate to energy. One is power is energy over time, 
and the other one is voltage, which is energy over charge. Now, if I cross multiply this formula, energy is power times time, and I do the same thing here with this formula, and energy is equal to voltage times charge. Now that I have two energy formula, I can make this power times time equal to voltage times charge. Now I can derive a formula for power in terms of voltage, charge, and time. However, charge over time is current. So power, electrical power, can be given by the product of the voltage times the current. Now, combined with Ohm's law, which is this triangle that we have voltage, resistance, and current, we can derive several formulas for power um, with substitution between voltage and current with Ohm's law. There is no symbol for power. Electric circuits. So electric circuit is a closed loop through which current flows. The components of a circuit are the battery, a wire or conductor, a resistance could be a light bulb or a resistor, um, a switch. Current always flows from the negative to the positive side of the battery. So instead of use all these components, we are going to replace with their symbols. And when you do that, now we are going to create and draw a schematic circuit. So a schematic circuit is um, a type of circuit or diagram that represents a circuit with using symbols. Here we have the battery with those two lines. We have a switch. We have um, the light bulb can be represented by uh, its corresponded resistance. And uh, we have the current flowing. Now, depends how, um, if we have more resistance in a circuit, depends how they are connected, we can create a series or parallel circuit. So if we have the two resistors in a circuit and we connect the terminal of one resistor with terminal of the other resistance, the resistor, and the terminal of the second resistor is connected to the battery source. And the terminal of the first resistor is connected to a switch. So we call this a series circuit. Current is the same throughout the circuit. Now, if we have um, both resistors, terminals, connect with each other and then connect to the switch and both connect to the battery, we have now a connection in parallel. So voltage in this case is the same for on each, across each resistor. And in this case, the current is the same across each resistor. Now to measure the values of current and voltage, we need to use um, electric meters. So we have here um, the M meter and the volt meter. There are two separate devices. You can also use a multimeter uh, to measure um, amps and voltage and resistance. But if you are using a separate device, the connections are kind different. For example, the ammeter, which is a device that measures current, is always connecting series with the circuit. So we need to open the circuit, insert the terminals of the N meter, and N meter provides very low resistance. 
which will not interfere with the flow of the current in the circuit. The voltmeter is a device used to measure voltage and is always connecting parallel with the circuit. So you can use the terminals of a voltmeter to connect in parallel with the device that you want to monitor or read the voltage. Now the voltmeter offer a very high resistance because then current will not flow through this branch. Okay, so an example of all these, I'm going to answer those two questions. One is, draw an electric circuit with two resistors in series, a three volt battery supply, a switch, an meter, and a voltmeter. So this is how we are going to draw uh, using the symbols and the connection that we just talked about. The second one, draw an electric circuit with two resistors in parallel instead of series. Now in parallel, notice that in series, the terminal of one is connected to the terminal of the other one. However, the, this terminal is not connected to this one, it's connected to the rest of the circuit. Likewise, the terminal of R2 is connected to a battery, um, in this case, the negative terminal of the battery. Now, the second one is draw an electric circuit with two resistors in parallel, a three volts battery supplies a switch and meter and a voltmeter. So now they are in parallel, which means that both terminals, they are connect together and connect to the rest of the circuit. Now the end meter must be serious. So it's a good idea um, if the end meter is reading the total current of the circuit is a good idea to place closer to the battery source and before the branches. Now this voltmeter is reading the voltage only for the resistor R2. However, because the type of uh, circuit that you see here, that is nothing else connected, so we can say the voltage across each resistor are the same of the battery source, which will be re read by this voltmeter. As uh, symbols for each electrical circuit component, resistor usually is the zigzag. Some programs um, use a box instead of the zigzag form. The current, it can be a straight arrow or a curvy arrow, DC voltage, a switch, voltmeter. Circuit junction is where usually there is more connection, where current is going to split. A light bulb can also be represented by this symbol instead of this. In this table, we are going to summarize all the notes about voltage, current, resistance, and power in terms of abbreviation, uh, formula by definition, formula by Ohm's law, units based on the formula, and the symbols that we use. Okay, so abbreviation for voltage, uppercase V, current, uppercase I, resistance, uppercase R, and power, uppercase P. Formula by definition for voltage is energy over charge. Current is charge over time. Resistance is resistivity times length over cross-sectional area of the wire. And power is energy over time. By Ohm's law formula, um, voltage is resistance times current. Current is voltage over resistance. Resistance is voltage over current. And power is voltage times current. 
Now the units are based on the formula. So for voltage, we have E is joules, charge is coulombs. Current, the charge is coulombs and, and time seconds. Resistance is ohms. Power is uh, energy is joules and time is second. So these are the standard uh, units um, used commonly for voltage is uppercase V. Now it can be a little bit confusing because the voltage abbreviation is V and the unit symbol is also V. Current is uppercase A. The symbol for the unit for resistance is omega and the power is uppercase W. Okay, so now I'm going to solve a couple of electric current multiple choice practice problems. These problems are from aplusphysics.com. You can check the website and there are more options and a very great tutorial. So right here, the current through a light bulb is two amps. How many coulombs of electric charge pass through the light bulb in one minute? Okay, so here we have the data. The current is two amps. It's looking for the charge and the time is one minute. So we need to convert minutes to seconds. Use the formula for current, the conceptual one is charge over time. So it's looking for charge. So charge is current times time. So you do a substitution and the charge is 120 coulombs. Next problem, a net charge of five coulombs passes a point on a conductor in 0 0.05 seconds. The average current is, again, do your data table, even though it's a very simple problem, but help to keep in track what the data is and what you can use in terms of formula. So here we have Q, you have time, and we need current. So you just use again the formula for the conceptual formula for current, which is charge over time. Do your substitution, and the answer is 100 amps. So the last one for this page. How much electrical energy is required to move a four microcoulomb charge through a potential difference of 36 volts? Okay, so in this one, you have to understand that potential difference is also abbreviated by PD is the same thing as voltage. That's why the symbol for the battery is those two parallel lines, one longer than the other one, because it's showing a difference in charges. So that's what is called potential difference. Potential difference and voltage is the same thing. So it's asking for the energy. It's a good idea to use the symbols instead of write the words. We use symbols in physics. So E is what it's looking for. Uh, the charge is for microcoulomb. Remember the micro is 10 to the minus 6 and the voltage is 36. So here is again is a conceptual uh, formula for voltage is energy over charge is looking for the energy. So do cross multiplication and this is the answer uh, 1.44 times 10 to the minus 4 joules. Okay, another problem. A potential drop of 50 volts is measured across a 250 ohms resistor. What is the power developed in the resistor? So again, here is an example of the language. Um, the potential drop is talking about voltage, which means that say drop because is, remember the voltage is energy over charge. So is energy that is going to be used throughout the circuit. So it's going to drop, it's going to be used um, of 50 volts. So 50 volts, let's look here better for you guys. Take a look. So here we have our data table. 
the voltage is 50, potential drop and voltage is the same thing. Um, the resistor is 250 ohms and is asking for the power developed. So remember, you have several formulas for power. Um, we have the one is the conceptual formula, P is equal E over T. And this one, the second one, it developed this formula um, when we went over, I went over the notes about power uh, is voltage times current, and we have Ohm's law. So we have those three, three ways to derive many formulas for power. So what we are looking for is a formula that we have voltage and that we have resistance. So we don't have directly here, but we can kind of find one. So if you use uh, P is equal VI, and we know by Ohm's law, V is RI. So what that means is that P is equal RI squared. So that's one formula. Doesn't help because we don't have current. Let's go to try to find another one. So P is equal VI. P is equal VI now, using Ohm's law, is V over R. So now you multiply V, you have V squared over R. Okay, this is perfect because we have voltage and we have resistance. So we can do our substitution and find the power developed by the res this resistor, which is 10 watts. So usually, if it's a resistor that is not going to emit light, so pretty much is the heat uh, that is going to be transformed. So the potential drop of 50 volts on the resistor means that the energy is going to be converted into heat. A circuit consists of a resistor and a battery. Increasing the voltage of the battery while keeping the temperature of the circuit constant, which result in increase of... Okay, so here is very easy. You just need to remember that voltage is the energy that is going to push the current. So higher the voltage, more energy to push. So the current is going to be higher. So the current will increase. An immersion heater has a resistance of 5 ohms while drawing a current of 3 amps. How much electrical energy is delivered to the heater during 200 seconds of operation? Okay, so it's very simple. So make your data table. The resistance is 5. The current is 3. Um, it's asking for the electrical energy delivered during 200 seconds. So here we have um, the conceptual formula for power is energy over time. So I want to know energy. So energy is P times T. I don't have the power, but I do have a formula that, that can help me to find the power. In this case, I have resistance and I have current. So the formula is this. So take a look on the previous slide. Uh, how I derive this formula. So now we have R is 5 I squared times 200. So you give us 9 times 10 to the third joules. Okay, so this one here, we have um, resistivity at 200 degrees Celsius. Resistivity is our role for resistance formula. So remember that resistivity depends on the type of the material. So here we have aluminum, copper, gold, chrome, silver, and tungsten. And you have a different amount of values for resistivity for this temperature. Okay, so now based on this table, let's answer this problem. A 10 meter long, a 10 meter length of wire with a cross-sectional area of three times 10 to the minus 6 square meter has a resistance of 9.4 times 10 to the minus 2 ohms at 20 degrees Celsius. The wire is most likely made of, 
Okay, so in order to find this, we need to find the resistivity. When we find the resistivity, and then we can look at this table and find the material that will um, that corresponds to this information. So here we have, as in terms of data, the length of the wire is 10 meters. The cross-sectional area is 3 times 10 to the minus 6 meters square, and the resistance is 9.4 times 10 to the minus 2 ohms. So the resistivity formula um, derived from the resistance is, um, now we have here the resistance, Sorry, we have the resistance times the cross-sectional area divided by the length. So we will use your calculator, you do your multiplication divided by 10, and the resistivity is 2 times 2.8 times 10 to the minus 8 ohms meter, which corresponds to aluminum. Another example. Aluminum, copper, gold, and chrome wires of equal lengths of 0.1 meters and equal cross-sectional areas of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters square are at 200 degree, 2 degrees Celsius. Which wire has the greatest electrical resistance? So notice here that all of them, they have the same length and the same cross-sectional area. So it's asking for the greatest uh, resistance. Okay, so if you compare um, the resist resistivity of them, so we have here resistance um, area over length, right? So now we need to look uh, what's going on here. So the area is the same and the length is the same. So which means that the resistivity is, the resistance is going to be uh, related just with the resistivity. So in this case, we just need to compare the resistivity of all four materials, aluminum, copper, gold, and nichrome. So in this case, Nichrome is the greatest one because it's 150 uh, times 10 to the minus 8. Gold is 2.44, copper is 1.72, and aluminum is 2.82. So in this case, Nichrome has the greatest resistance.